Hello. Good evening, darling. Who is this? It's Hugo Mountbatten. You know, the superstar actor from Jurassic Park. I don't think so. Well, listen, the reason I'm calling is TGV has a new video up. Well, I'm getting ready to watch a video. About wristwatches? Oh, just some scary movie. Sounds dreadful. You really should check out The Urban Gentry and like his new video. We could share the popcorn. There's enough too. What did you say? What do you want? Naturally, to pair you with a lovely glass of California Chardonnay. Tell you how, darling, it's ma. Okay, hi guys, and welcome to the show. It's state of the collection time. I can't believe it. Another year has passed. Crazy how, how time flies, but here we are. Yeah, as you guys know, I do my state of the collection annually now, uh, around October, around Halloween time. Um, so hopefully I will get this edited, <laughs> edited in time. <laughs> ah, God, hope so. Right, I better do wish watch check before I get into it wearing the Yemma Superman, kind of enjoying the steel version before I um, sell it possibly for the bronze. I know I've talked about that in the bronze GMT review. Not the, the GMT, but yeah, we'll get into all of this stuff in the, in just a moment. Guys, do uh, check out the Urban Gentry store, link down below. There's some new merchandising in there, including the Roly tea, the uh, Masters of Speed tea, and the Seiko Saturday tea. Uh, all designed by yours truly, available in AM and PM combinations. It is probably the best way to support the channel directly. Uh, obviously, the most immediate way is to give this channel a like, um, always to do that, of course. You don't want um, old Hugo turning up because you haven't liked the video. <laughs> uh, what else? Yeah, that's about it, guys. Um, Oh yeah, and I should also mention there are some watches that are not included in this video because they are family heirlooms, and I, you know, they, they don't go anywhere. You know, they're uh, back home securely and safe. So uh, things like my my grandfather's Charles Frodsham, for example, pocket watches, that kind of thing. Without further ado, let's change perspectives and get into this year's state of the collection. So the watches you see before you here, these are essentially my keeper watches. There's a few new ones, that, and of course there's some old favourites, which I'm sure you know. Uh, for example, we have the Seiko Flighty there. The love of that watch has not diminished whatsoever. I don't need to go over that again. Oh, and by the way, um, just if you're wondering, I'm wearing my wife's Saab 033. This actually used to be mine. Uh, there it is, gorgeous creature, the baby Grand Seiko. These are now discontinued and becoming quite hard to get, but I've put it on uh, this genuine croc strap from, I think it's Tech Swiss. Don't let the Hirsch buckle fool you. This is uh, a buckle from a, a different um, strap, but as all my watches are gonna be here, I don't have anything <laughs> to wear, so I borrowed this. This used to be mine and it kind of migrated into her collection. Um, she loves it just as much as I do, which is great because I still get to borrow it, obviously. But anyway, um, so you've seen most of these, you know it, a lot of these. Um, these are my so-called keepers in the collection. We have some new ones like the Mission Impossible uh, Casio there. This has become my favorite Casio watch. Uh, I've put it on a rubber strap. I think this actually might be from Hirsch. I can't quite remember who the strap's from, but I've talked about this endlessly, but this is just one of the most fun watches. Um, some people don't like its very distinctive look. I absolutely adore it. I can't stop wearing this thing. There we go. Look at that. So I always tend to have a watch that I wear when I sleep and it has to be something 
that I can read either in low light, for example, my Explorer there, which I'm celebrating, I think, uh, four or five years with this watch now, and that's also on the rubber strap. I've got to, I've got to talk about this watch again. I will do another video on it soon. But as I was saying, I, I, I like to have a watch on when I sleep because I have this weird thing where I get up at three, four in the morning. Or I wake up, and I need to know what time it is. I press the, um, the little backlight there, and then I go back to sleep. I don't know why I do this, um, and sometimes I do actually get up extremely early. Uh, when it's so dark so um but i don't know why i'm talking about my sleeping habits what, what i mean to say is that it's just a really uh useful watch uh that i, I it's the, the the complications that the, the flash alert I, it's just become something that i use so much um then we've got my other casio the classic dw56 the quintessential g-shock square this is my workout watch and in fact actually the um you can see I was timing 34 minutes. Uh, that was my cardio. I've worn this every single day. That's why it's in such a disheveled state. This is uh, what I wear when I do cardio, if I'm on the bike or going for a jog. And you can hear the beep has actually gone. I've used this button so much that the beep, oh, it, the, the, you can hear it there, but it comes and goes. It's. Uh, I think I've actually <laughs> worn out a G-Shock. Uh, doesn't look that much uh, worn out. Yeah, my faithful G-Shock. I don't think this is going anywhere. Um, yeah, I, yeah, it's just so affordable. I mean, 40 bucks, you know, probably 50 bucks now. As we're talking of Casio, I've got my um, uh, the Casio F91W. Now, my wife has the quintessential original. Uh, this is a new color scheme. I can't remember if it was released this year or last year. I've, I have t I talked about this as well, but they're just so fun and comfortable. I, I, I really like this kind of grayed out color scheme. It's really, really cool. I might put that on a NATO. She has hers on the NATO strap. Um, so it's nice to have matching watches uh, and sometimes. Another keeper is the Rolex GMT. This was one of my favorite watches or most worn watches. When was it? 2018? uh because of the gmt complication having family back in the uk and in italy um i could look at this hand and figure out you know if it was a good time to call them or, or what was going on back home the day date complication which i guess we'll we'll talk about in just a moment that has actually overtaken the gmt as my most useful daily complication so wearing habits kind of changed um, a little bit, but I, I still love this watch. It's not going anywhere. I don't really like to discuss money because it is a bit vulgar to um, or, or déclassé to focus on value all the time. But I bought it for five, and they go for absolutely astronomical amounts now. So, um, and I'm st I'm still still not interested in selling it. Um, what else? We got the data bank. Lovely bit of retro tech. I don't really wear this one. I just like it as a as a kind of design um a kind of objet d'art uh, um something that i just love the look of it yeah i should wear this more another watch that i forgot to put in is the belova accutron um i always get criticized for <laughs> pronouncing it wrong but whatever a tomato tomato and all the rest of it incredible piece of tech uh this is the space view i did have a s different version before um but i've owned this one for a few years now uh, it's the closest i could find to the version that um, Richard Rogers, one of my heroes, a British Italian architect, Sir Richard Rogers, I should say now, he famously wore this and, uh, you know, he's a style icon, absolutely. He gravitated towards this. It was actually some of the inspiration behind the Pompidour Centre in Paris that he co-designed. Um, I'm sure you guys know the Pompidour Centre was, the whole thing about it was being inside out and he kind of liked the idea of being able to see the inside so yeah it's still going strong a pre-quartz bit of age technology but this the hum from it but at least i do have the belova something made in america which is very important to me uh, i don't tend to gravitate towards green but um it's so futuristic and cool i actually wore this to the opera one time i love i love it because it's a it's a conversation piece, you know, so let's put it in there. And talking of watches that have been to space, because the GMT has been to space, so is the Actron. There's a good old Fortis. Now, I am planning to get their new 2020 release. 
I'm waiting for them to do. I, they have done a, a 39 millimeter new release, so that's very exciting. But of course, uh, this on the Kevlar strap. I've I've reviewed this strap, by the way. This watch is also very unlike the other pieces because it has that Lemania 5100. And the way it displays the minutes of the chronograph with the neon jet it's just so unique and actually very effective as well this is an extremely rare uh, the iss limited edition 38 millimeter when i visited the factory i just fell in love with uh, this particular watch and i had to get one so when i came home from my tour of switzerland i um I, I sourced one of those and then of course we've got my squire the lion shark which i've upgraded i've got to wear this i've upgraded to the luminous bezel so the burgundy insert which i still have of course now it's completely luminous which is just so cool a very very special watch and i still have to pinch myself every time i think about this because it was such a special time in my life and um, i wore it the entire trip in switzerland of course we went to see squale as well and while we're on the subject of squale here we have the 39 millimeter which i also co-designed this is the no date version this has become my favorite watch it used to be let's just grab it it used to be the rolex explorer and you'll probably see why they're both very clean they both have the numerals at uh, nine three and six although this has the 12 as well um i love their clean aesthetic this is based on the cases and watches uh, they worked on uh, with um, the legendary Black Pan. And I love Squally. I mean, their, their history, and, and this is why another reason why it's so, well, it's become my favorite is not only is the size, it's a great do-it-all watch. It's dressy, but yet, you know, you can wear it. I've used this actually to time my cardio with Dive Time Bezel, but then it has the Explorer um, layout slightly-ish, which I really like, no date, that resplendent sunburst uh, effect the, the 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 vintage curved crystal there the sapphire I, I it's eta it's it's swiss made uh, it's from a brand that has one of the richest legacies when it comes to dive watches and i'm always constantly finding new stuff out about squire and their history um recently they they've they've been making watches again for the um italian um divers in the police force and all this kind of amazing stuff and talking of limited editions the old catalina is still there uh this watch I, you know what this broke the record of being the thinnest 300 meter uh, water resistant pilot watch because it is a pilot watch you've got a tw uh, 12 hour bezel second time zone the whole thinking of this was um inspired by the amphibious boat or the flying boat i should say the catalina of course uh, so we've got little style cues of world war ii so i was imagining what, what kind of a watch what what pilot watch would you want if you were flying a, 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 an aircraft that basically lands on water so i still don't think anybody's surpassed that uh, record so that's pretty cool and of course the um, lion shark was the first 1521 without a date so kind of every watch we worked on that we wanted to do something new. Um, I am working on two other watches for next year. Unfortunately, they have been delayed. It takes years to do prototypes from start to finish. Um, people really don't understand how difficult it is bringing out a watch. But um, so we got that to look forward to some new urban gentry watches. And then we have something completely different, the antithesis of these tool watches, um, my little AP. Now this is a uh, an amazing little watch. It's from the Gerald Genta years. A lot of people think that Genta is, well, obviously that he, with AP, everyone knows the Royal Oak, but uh, he actually did design a few, well, a lot of watches before the Royal Oak. Uh, and this is from the, the pre-Royal Oak age. This is from the 50s. Now look how thin this is. This is a manual wind. It's based on a um, JLC caliber. This was a gift from a very, very special friend of mine. They know who they are. And inside is the Calibre 2003, which is, um, it was developed, a, a kind of partnership between AP and uh, JLC. Um, and it's just so understated. Solid gold, obviously. Very minimalist. In many ways, it's the embodiment of uh, the perfect dress watch. And what is unusual about this watch, it has a screw down case back. This is actually, you can unscrew it very unusual i've never seen this before so so unique uh so understated and i love ap i think ap are greatly underrated 
Um, everybody goes to the Royal Oak, understandably so. I love the Royal Oak too, and you'll notice I sold my Royal Oak, it's not here. And I really should make that point, is that there are watches that I've purchased throughout the year, too many that have come and gone, so I'm just going to talk about uh, the watches that have gone as I go. So I had another AP, the Moon Phase, and, and I have sold that. Um, I felt a little bit, not greedy, but uh, it was a little bit much having two uh, APs. Uh, I hardly ever wear a dress watch, so I just wanted something. And considering this was a gift, I think this is a bit more special. So I sold the moon phase. And yes, I would love to keep it, but I used that money. I've invested it into um, a project that I'm working on outside of YouTube. Nothing to do with YouTube. Um, oh, and by the way, this has an amazing velvet strap which as you guys know whenever i do dress up i love my velvet jackets i have you know crushed velvet jackets so yeah gorgeous absolutely gorgeous my little dress watch there so you'll notice this is not very many watches well this is only about half of them where's the other watches well let's let's bring in the navi timer now i owned uh, several Navi timers. I had that blue one, the automatic. Uh, this is the Cosmonaut. At one point I had three Navi timers and it was just too much. So I decided which one I love the most. I think this is the most unique. It's a 24 hour dial, which is just um, so unusual. And it's manual wind. I think it's based on La Mania. I can't quite remember. I have done a video on this, by the way. It's, in my opinion, the most underrated space going watch. Um, it was before the Speedmaster. So quite legendary now this is their later version before they went to the in-house movements and all the rest of it but um, still quintessentially a, uh, a navi timer but what i love is that it's a little bit thinner just a smidgen thinner because it's manual wind and you've got this crazy dial it's just so much intricate detail it's bewitching uh do i ever use it no but it's just an aesthetic i like but i also appreciate simpler watches and i love the fact that it's 24 hours it takes 24 hours to go around it does get a little bewildering when you're used to a 12 hour dial but then you start kind of appreciating time in a whole new way so it's very very cool and i've put it on the rios you guys know i love these um, these are made in germany really thick aviation um, specialist straps I love how they taper and I, I think they work with Navi timers so well. I mean, it's almost like a Bunt style strap. Um, so, yeah, and this is rather big for my wrist at about 41.5. But if, if you know your history, you know that the Navi timers are all, always big. They're supposed to be big. I mean, just look how much stuff is on that, on that uh, dial. Now, I'm always fighting not to buy another Navi timer. And I probably will and eventually. I do miss my blue one immensely so i really should say that i consolidated my navi timers down to this i do feel the 806 the vintage one i had was a, a little bit fragile it did worry me wearing it don't get me wrong i adored it but i think this is a perfect kind of um balance of the modern navi timer and vintage ones so very very cool indeed all right moving on to another uh, 50s icon. This is my Amiga. Now it's not the Amiga unboxed. I actually sold this one or, or I upgraded to this one. This is the same caliber 500 movement inside but instead of being gold capped it's solid gold. So um, shout out to, to Matt who bought my my previous Seamaster. It's pretty much exactly the same. The only difference is solid gold and then we've got the 12, 3, 6 and 9 and as you guys know from my two most favorite watches the, the squalor 39 there and the explorer over here you know that i love this um this layout this new mode layout and i managed to source it with the uh, period correct buckle there i've put it on this i don't even know what this strap is who makes this strap benchmark i think this was a gift but um i kind of like the the distressed aesthetic I might actually put this on something a little bit smarter, like something crop style. But So shout out to Matt, who bought my um, previous Seamaster. I really love Amiga from the 30s, 40s and 50s. Now, to buy this, I did sacrifice my World War II uh, Amiga. Um, it was just too special. Um, I loved the blued hands and everything, but I didn't wear it because I was scared to wear it. And, and this, I'm not so scared to wear it, but yet it does have the legendary 500 caliber which is a wonderful automatic 
Uh, it went on to be featured or a version of it in the, the first military Amiga divers that were later on in the 60s. So this to me is the, the pinnacle of Amiga, the 50s. It really was. Um, they had earned a reputation from the Second World War of being so reliable. You know, before the kind of the shaky 70s with those um, very, very problematic 1000 calibers. And then, of course, they got bought by Swatch and... Yeah, there's nothing wrong with modern Amiga, but to me, there's just something special about this, and I'm really glad I got this particular version. I did do an unboxing, I shot it, but I just didn't have time to edit, and, you know, I didn't want to do another Amiga unboxing and, you know, repeat myself. Considering they're so similar, it's almost a Pi Panda. I was considering a Connie, actually, a, a Constellation, but the Seamaster name means something so much to me. I mean... My first luxury watch was the Brosnan Seamaster and uh, all the rest of it. And I didn't even mention my day date. Damn it. Talking of gold. Let's just quickly mention the day date. This is the 18238 or the 8 is something. I'll, I'll put the correct reference number if I get it wrong. But I upgraded to this one, which is the double quick set. Again, I've done the video with the linen dial. I fell in love with the linen dial on the Tudor, the Tudor day date I had. So uh, I think think this was a kind of great amalgamation of two a little less flashy than the previous the tony soprano one i had which was the uh the champagne dial and unfortunately that did not have uh, it had the single quick set so that was the 18038 i think right now on to tudor this is my tudor sub as you guys know i sold my rolex uh, the ceramic submariner a while ago and i went back to tudor i love Tudor. I like the vintage Tudor best. I'm sorry. Yeah, don't get me wrong. I, I adore the, 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 the Black Bay. I owned the Black Bay once. Um, and I especially love the North Flag and a lot of the newer pieces. But there's something about this particular vintage. One of the last great Submariners from um, Tudor. Look at that massive uh, crystal there. Just wears so beautifully. It's perfect for me. Um, I actually prefer the Tudor Submariner to the Rolex because you get the same look and feel, but yet you have a more affordable ETA. And from a distance, it looks like a Submariner. It gives you that Submariner feel, but I know it's a Tudor. And to me, I really do identify with the Tudor brand. I went into their history, the meaning of the name, the, the, the rich military legacy. I mean... There were much more military Tudor subs issued in a higher quantity, far more than uh, mill subs. And yeah, mill subs always get the, the recognition. So um, it's a little bit unfair. I think the Tudor has almost, well, no, definitely has much more um, a richer military history. So there we go. And I'm wearing it on the Oyster uh, bracelet there, which is unusual for me but as you can see i've got so many straps my god I, I i think i've only got one nato strap is my nato strap days numbered i don't know no no i spoke too soon look <laughs> here we go uh the superman this is actually on the chopping block i recently reviewed the bronze uh gmt and while i'm not going to get the, the gmt i've already got my gmt i don't need the gmt but uh it did kind of bring my attention and, and appreciation to bronze watches more and i think a bronze diver would be a, a fantastic addition so this is going to be sold uh, i bought this and, and i've got to say i mean yema has really been a brand that i didn't really know about i didn't experience um, i borrowed one to review it just clicked i love the 39 millimeter case of this it does actually remind me slightly of my my Tudor sub there you can see the similarities but of course with that wonderful locking system people always think oh my god this is going to endanger the, the water resistance no you, you don't fully unscrew it. it just unscrews one turn and then it's locked it's very efficient people uh, really don't get it until you well until you got it really and i've put it on the l alamein i'll put a link down for this in the description uh, another strap i designed uh, with Wrist County Watch Club. Um, I just think it matches the black fantastically. I've actually cut off, you can see there, I've cut off the extra bit um, just to make it a little bit thinner. So now it's a one piece, which I think is kind of cool. Going way off subject. Uh, well, actually I'm not, I'm talking about the things I love. 
but yeah this has been definitely one of the brands that um i've really taken a liking to uh, uh kind of that squalor level of history but of course french and now they supply the french air force again a bit like squalor supply the marina militare uh, they've just renewed that I think so very very cool so this is on the chopping block but I'm going to replace it with the bronze diver not the bronze GMT just the bronze diver the thing that's delayed me I can't make up my mind if I should go red bezel or black bezel because um, they have got a burgundy bezel and it's stunning it's absolutely stunning so I'm just going to put that there for the moment next is the uh, Casio Oak now I've put it back on the rubber strap I did a video when I um, installed this thing this is the, the this thing what am I saying this case this is the um, the metal uh, aftermarket um, kind of Royal Oak case I do like this first generation because you've got little elements from the G-Shock like these uh, indentations here but I have and I I'm going to show you right now I bought this let me just open it up my gloves are coming off so this is a kit from a brand um, let me just move that Casio Lifestyle. I'll leave their details down below. Um, they have Instagram and everything. And they import and deal with, you got your first gen. This is actually the second gen. So I'm going to do a video about this and I'm going to mod it with the new generation. Oops, sorry, it's upside down. There we go. We've got the full bracelet. This is much more AP, much more Royal Oak. You'll see the... Um, let me let me just put this down i'm more faithful to the royal oak rather than the casio um so i'm going to probably mod this out shout out to them if you want to get parts and you don't want to order from china then i highly recommend this company this is their logo very very cool stuff indeed um, i'll leave their details in the description but i haven't had time to actually shoot that video so i do apologize but um fun watch i'm not sure if i'm gonna keep it or not uh, ever since this the mission impossible casio's arrived uh that's been my kind of fun you know quirky watch so um and they have released a loomed insert for those for those markers which I'm, I can't seem to source, but I might do another video. I don't know if I'm going to keep it, but guys, do let me know in the comments if you'd like to see a modding video for that. Another watch, here we go, is the uh, Laurier, the Neptune. This actually should have been in my keepers, but I'm considering another Laurier at the moment, so I'm not, ex <laughs> not exactly sure if it qualifies for keeper status. This is the first generation, so quite rare now with the gilt. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful design. Shout out to Lorenzo there. And Lauren, great team. One of the few watches I, I just always keep on the bracelet because I love the bracelet. I'm couple of order this one, yeah. Oh, and I just realized I don't think the bezel's lined up, but there we go. Uh, the new generations are not, they're not bad. I love them too, but um, it's just something about this. I think they changed the ratio of dial or something. Um, it is slightly different now. So... I'm not sure I, I i don't know if i should um upgrade but anyway uh we'll put it here for the moment I, what i love about this is that you get that dr no slightly seamaster slightly super ocean feel without being a blatant ripoff and that's what it's all about and talking of micro brands here's another the dan henry now i was considering selling this and buying the 1937 but what i like about this is this keeps me from buying another Speedmaster. This is the 19... I forget. 1962. There you go. And you've got the Maserati birdcage there. I think it is. Very, very cool. But I love this watch. It's um, it's great size. Affordable. Fun. It's an amalgamation of the Panda from Universal Genève and a bit of uh, Speedy there. But uh, And I've put it on... What strap is this? I don't even know what strap. Oh, I think this is might be Hirsch. I can't remember, but suede strap. I just think it complements it beautifully. Um, so yeah, for the moment, this is my... I, I only really want to have one Dan Henry in the collection. And, I, you know, I don't know. Again, like, that's the problem with his watches. I want to buy them all. But then they just sit around and then they, they don't get worn. So I don't know. I do like the Art Deco 1937 
a lot though so I don't yeah but I, I'd have to sell this one and I don't I don't think I want to do that okay next we have the uh, Seiko 5kx there uh, this really seemed to offend a lot of people when I bought it uh, but guys you know I buy watches for myself not to please other people so don't worry about it just love that bezel never seen a bezel like it it is a little bit yacht masterish but with this kind of pebble dash effect champagne dial it's 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 fun it's loud it's lively i did have to order it from abroad uh, and i'm still having fun with it you know um it's you have to be in the mood for it but uh, very very cool indeed and i i really like where seiko going with the new 5kx and actually we might as well mention it there's my actual real uh, SKX. This is my mod. This actually might be on the chopping block too. The last watch purchase of this year is probably uh, another uh, Seiko mod that I'm doing. It's been delayed because it, I'm having a special dial made and I'll, I'll show all the details when it arrives. But So therefore this might be made redundant. But of course it's so special that the little panther cub uh, everything blacked out and of course my favorite feature this is so cool this is genius is the um the hukusei wave was done in high polish to really contrast with that sandblasted you know what i'm not going to sell this what am i talking about i've got to have an skx a real skx in the collection even if it's modded like this the only the only thing is i wish the the um, the bezel was um uh loomed but they don't have the blacked out loomed bezel yet um so i prefer to go all blacked out so uh yeah it's a really cool watch and i've got the mercedes hands i just love mercedes hands you know jeff did the lovely thing of painting the tip orange to match the divers 200 subtle subtle touch but just completes it so where am i going to put this god i'm running out of space let's put it over there i think so guys, I, I wonder if you notice what is missing from last year. Uh, it is my Seiko Ripley, and I have sold it, but I replaced it with this, the PVD one. And I'm going to do a video all about this because this has one of the most fascinating, interesting histories behind it. Histories? Or history? No, sorry, singular. I don't want to give too too many spoilers away for the for the video, but look out for the video. Now... I know a lot of you guys go, oh, well, you, you sold the Ripley, but you know what? This came out in 2015, same as the Ripley. I just wanted something with the PVD. Uh, the value of this is not going through the roof as much as the, um, the Ripley is, of course, but I basically snagged this for a bargain. Um, I wanted the black PVD because I tend to wear black a little bit more these days so i think it's a bit more understated um and once i got this i i just fell in love with it and then i thought you know what i sold the ripley i invested that money into a, a, a project that i'm working on which is um going very well and i also actually needed to buy new equipment for the channel as well so to me it was a worthy sacrifice but i've still got a little bit of the the ripley magic here now when i do the video on this it will kind of make sense um, because this has one of the most interesting backstories but at the same time it's just such a distinctive watch oh, just look at that look at that so cool so 80 so lovable and yet ergonomic and practical but look out for that video it'll be coming soon um, it is a watch that i never knew there was so much story backstory behind it so it's going to be very fun to share that but yeah that's about it anyway guys let's take it back to um the studio so i'm going to leave it there now guys don't forget to add your state of the collection lineup in the comments below i'd love to hear what uh, you've got uh, currently in your collection compared to last year a lot of you guys i actually know your collections now which is crazy but it's it's great this is what's fun about it we share our journey we are all enthusiasts at the end of the day. Uh, that's what the channel's all about. So um, please do share that in the comments. What have you gained? What have you lost? What are you considering selling? All of that good stuff. I just love hearing that from you guys. 
so do share that in the comments right don't forget to like the video uh what else i think that's about it yeah check out the store yeah i think that's about it all right guys thank you so much for watching i'll catch you in the next one okay ciao